Hi, Pat. I understand that we're talking about your partner situation today. I know you wanted some advice. Um, so I looked over the information that you gave me and I kind of did a rundown of what your investments look like and what you and Jamie's investments look like and what advice I would give you going forward. So first I wanted to talk about your partner agreement and how you worked it out between you and Jamie. And just some advice I'd give you to put into your partner agreement that I think would help in most of these situations. And I'll refer back to this um, as we talk through your numbers and as we talk through the internal controls that I will recommend you. First of all, I think through your partner agreement, you need to make a contract, obviously a written contract as your partner agreement. And you need to go through and talk about checks and balances between you and Jamie. It's really important that you set up a voting system or some way to make decisions between the two of you so that you guys are making collective decisions that's compromisable and someone isn't getting frustrated like you in this situation. Um, checks and balances in this case it also would mean that you need approval from each other to do certain things. Um, when certain actions Jamie wants to take, she needs to talk to you first examples like that. I also think it's important to put on your partner agreement some instructions on how to resolve disagreements. So clear instructions on step to step like what to do if you are in a situation like this again and you feel like you need someone to step in and help so you put in a mediation clause or something along the lines of that. You also need to talk about partner authority and who is um, in charge of the debt if your company actually goes into debt and many other things like that. And also your percentage of what the company is that goes into partner authority and talk more specifically about that. I also wanted to talk about your the withdrawals that you're frustrated about that Jamie's taking, the petty cash um, that she's been using and also about cash receipts and what that looks like accounting wise for you. So I wrote down some numbers and I'm going to share these documents with you after, but for now I have um, just the documents on paper since my Excel is not working currently. Technology has been difficult. So written down, I just came up with a mock sort of idea of what your capital investments will look like. I'll kind of share like the rough view of what it is. Again, I did make an Excel spreadsheet, but it's not working. So I'll share that with you later. But here's what I wrote down for you, if you can read this at all. Um, basically, it's going over your capital investments and withdrawals through you and Jamie. And then also the bottom part is the equity that you see on the balance sheet and what it would look like and how it's different between you and Jamie. So first I, I wrote your capital and these are just random numbers that I picked. So I picked 20,000 for the two of you and I split that between the two of you. So the total is 40,000 and then your net income. I just picked a random number, number again. I put 40,000 for the both of you that split between the two of you. So the total be 80,000. Second, I put, um, a balance of the 60,000 between the capital investment and the net income, which totals 120 between the both of you. Then comes the withdrawals. So then you told me that Jamie is taking out double of what you were taking out. So I put 8,000 as a withdrawal from you and then 16,000 from a withdrawal from her. So the total would be 2,400 or 24,000 for the withdrawal. But your ending capital would be different because of that. So your ending capital would be 52, hers would be 44. Can you see the difference? Her ending capital is lower than you because she is taking this withdrawals. And then it shows on the balance sheet because of that. You are separately written out on the balance sheet. You can show that on the balance sheet. So she knows what she has invested in this business, what she has, what you have. That's part of what helps you out as partners, just to know you are in charge of your withdrawals. Second, um, we can move on to the petty cash. So I did some journal entries. I'm gonna show you that right now. Um, so here are journal entries. Again, I wish my Excel sheet was working, but it is not currently. So I did a journal entry for petty cash. So 
how it goes is you would debit petty cash and credit cash for a journal entry to start. So that'd be the 200 that you put in petty cash. That's what you decided. And then for each expense, I put a delivery expense and then a credit card expense and then a dry cleaning expense. And those last two expenses are hers. And so then I did also a t-chart. So your total at the bottom for your petty cash on a t-shirt would only be five dollars at the end so i'm hoping you're reimbursing that as you go that's another thing you need you and jamie need to talk about and you need to communicate like how are we going to reimburse this how are we when are we going to allow um someone to be in charge of that how are we going to put the money in whatever um that procedure needs to be talked about in your partner agreement Lastly, I want to talk about cash receipts. I don't have this written out, but again, I have this on Excel spreadsheet. So your cash, re cash receipts journal should name each account, should initial off who is writing in what account, um, should initial off if it's a sales of cash or accounts receivable, should write off if it's if there's any discounts in it and write the date. All this stuff needs to be written in cash receipts. And... If it's not written there, then you're not gonna, it shouldn't be showing up in a journal entry, it shouldn't be showing up in your round sheet. Now, looking forward to internal controls to help you with the frustrations with Jamie, there are some things I think you can set up to help you too. Um, now, internal controls is ways that you can put responsibility on you and Jamie that are separate, checks and balances to make sure that your guys' jobs are making sure that both of you aren't taking full control and maybe experiencing unethical behavior, like maybe you're experiencing now with Jamie. So some things I wanted to talk about, I don't know how many employees you have, so it sounds like I know it's a small business, these might be hard to do, but you need to find a way to do them if this is actually what's happening in your business and you need to talk about this with Jamie. So I know you've already decided to do $200 in the petty cash, that's what I wanna talk about first. But you also maybe need to decide on three jobs with petty cash. And this can also apply to withdrawals, but I'll go over that detail later. So with petty cash, you can have someone that approves when cash is taken or when it can be reimbursed. You can have someone also counting the petty cash at all times, making sure they're um, covering the costs of reimbursing the count as a whole. And then also someone holding the petty cash. These are three separate jobs that are really important and keeps the checks and balances. So someone have, would have to go get a voucher, a approval voucher from the person that approves the petty cash. And then from there, they take that voucher and they get the petty cash from the person that actually has the petty cash. So say Jamie does have the petty cash, but, and she's in charge of that, but you are making the approval. So that's where the checks and balances come in or someone else is making the approval or something like that. And then you also need to make sure that you're talking to Jamie and he's like, this is what we can use for petty cash. This not, this is not okay though. Lastly, you also need to talk about how, what payments exceed um, for petty cash. So the $25 delivery expense payment is a good example. Do you want to go over $25 for an expense? Do you want to go over $50 for an expense? If you have four transactions in a day of $50, that could deplete it really quickly. So you need to talk and say like, okay, anything over $50, that is something that we need to um, use from our bank account. That is something we need to use, use a credit card or a debit card that is specifically for that instead. You also need to make sure that you're using those approval vouchers and those are being kept and used later for, um, proving that they were approved, but also to check them into a balance sheet or a journal entry, anything like that, to make sure that you're accounting for all of this. Next, moving on to internal trolls for withdrawals. You can apply all the same things for um, the petty cash. You can also apply for withdrawals. So I would include someone who makes approvals for that, someone who's counting now not necessarily counting but um monitoring how much you're taking out and maybe putting a cap on that just for your and jamie's sake and then also someone maybe holding the bank ac bank account or um having someone be in charge of 
what goes in and out of that and monitoring it and giving the person the money. So all three jobs can be applied and you need to talk to Jamie about this. You need to discuss it with her. And that can also apply to how you're divvying up your business. This is what you talk about in your partner agreement, how your partner authority works out. Are you 50-50? Um, how much stake is in the business? This needs to be discussed more. Lastly, for cash receipts and internal controls for that, you need to make sure before every single customer comes in, you're writing in cash receipts, what they have to pay, and then later filling the rest of it out, initialing it, making sure that you're monitoring every single transaction. That needs to happen every single day. That needs to be a, a for sure thing. And someone can be in charge of that. It can be someone's job. That is their job. That is it. They need to make sure that they're monitoring every single day, every single person. So when they look and see all the appointments, they say, okay, I see all these people are in the cash receipts. All these accounts are in the cash receipts. Really important. And I think there's many other small checks and balances that you and Jamie need to decide together. So um, certain jobs that could also help you to monitor each other more. Um, and these can all be discussed in your partner agreement contract, which I think you need to lay out on paper soon. These things can't be happening. If you're really getting frustrated about this, this could potentially affect your business. That is all I have for you today. Um, I thank you for listening to me. Thank you for asking for my advice. It was a great privilege of mine and I am happy that I could help. I hope this works out for you, Pat, and everything works out between you and Jamie as well. Have a great day.